Here we are. Now we're live on Facebook. Wonderful. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to St. John's Church for this service of morning prayer. Um, we are so delighted to have you here with us this morning. I'm delighted to be joined by my vaccinated guest uh, uh, here, Richard Weir. He's going to be serving as our respondent, which has normally been a person who is um, in the Zoom meeting, but we're delighted to have him here with us um, this morning. Everything that you need for worship, um, pretty much everything I think is uh, going to be shown on screen, uh, but if you'd like a copy of our leaflet, you can find that at www.stjcsh.org slash live. Um, so why don't we um, want to invite you to center yourselves um, in uh, God's presence. I don't know if you've got devices that you want to turn to do not disturb. Um, and just to find yourself here in God's presence um, as we listen to this beautiful prelude played by Dr. Whitener. <laughs>
You shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And you shall be my witness in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. Lord, open our lips. And our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory, Glory to, to the, the Father, Father and to the Son, and, and to the Holy Spirit, Spirit as, as it was, was in the beginning, beginning is, now, is now, and, and will, will be forever. forever. Amen. Amen. The Lord is full of compassion and mercy. Come, let us adore him. Let us sing together the Jubilate. <laughs> Joyful in the Lord, all your lands. Serve the Lord with gladness and come before his presence with a song. Know this, the Lord himself is God. He himself has made us and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of appointed for this morning is Psalm 29. Let us say it responsively by whole verse. Ascribe to the Lord, you gods. Ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory due his name. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. The voice of the Lord is upon the waters. The God of glory thunders. The Lord is upon the mighty waters. The voice of the Lord is a powerful voice. The voice of the Lord is a voice of splendor. The voice of the Lord breaks the cedar trees. The Lord breaks the cedars of Lebanon. He makes Lebanon skip like a calf and Mount Hermon like a young wild ox. The voice of the Lord splits the flames of fire. The voice of the Lord shakes the wilderness. The Lord shakes the wilderness of Kadesh. The voice of the Lord makes the oak trees worth and strips the forests bare. And in the temple of the Lord, all are crying glory. The Lord sits enthroned above the flood. The Lord sits enthroned as king forevermore. The Lord shall give strength to his people. The Lord shall give his people the blessing of peace. Glory, glory to, to the, the Father, Father and, and to the Son, Son and, to the, and to the Holy Spirit. Spirit. As, as it, it was, was in the beginning, beginning is, is now, now, and, and will, will be, be forever. forever. Amen. <clears throat> A reading from the prophet Isaiah. In the year that King Uzziah died, the Lord, I saw the Lord sitting on the throne, on a throne high and lofty, and the hem of his robe filled the temple. Seraphists were in attendance above him. Each had six wings. With two, they covered their faces. With two, they covered their feet. With two, they flew. And one called to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. The pivots on the threshold shook at the voices of those who called. The house filled with smoke. And I said, woe is me, I am lost for I am a man of unclean lips. I live among the, a people of unclean lips, yet my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Then one of the seraphs flew to me, holding a live coal that had been taken from the altar with a pair of thong tongs. The seraph touched my mouth and, it, and with it said, now 
that this has touched your lips, your guilt has departed and your sin is blotted out. Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, whom shall I send and who will go for us? And I said, here am I, send me the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. The canticle chosen for this morning is, is a song of praise. Let us say it responsibly by whole verse. Glory to you, Lord God of our fathers. You are worthy of praise. Glory to you. Glory to you for the radiance of your holy name. We will praise you and highly exalt you forever. Glory to you in the splendor of your temple, on the throne of your majesty. Glory to you. Glory to you, seated between the cherubim. We will praise you and highly exalt you forever. Glory to you, beholding the depths in the high vault of heaven. Glory to you. Glory to you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We will praise you and highly exalt you forever. Glory, Glory to, to the, the Father, Father, and to the Son, and to the, the Holy Spirit, Spirit as, as it was, was in the beginning, beginning is, is now, and, and will, will be forever. forever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the Gospel of John. There was a Pharisee named Nicodemus, a leader of the Jews. He came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are the te a teacher whom has come from God, for no one can do these th for no one can do these signs that you do apart from the presence of God. Jesus answered him, very truly, I tell you, tell you, no, no one can see the kingdom of God without being born from me. Nicodemus said to him, how can anyone be born after having grown old? Can one enter a second time into the mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, very truly, I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God without being born of the water and spirit. What is born of the flesh is flesh, and what is born of the spirit is spirit. Do not be astonished that I said to you, you must be born from above. The wind blows where it chooses, and you hear the sound of it, but you do not know where it comes from or where it goes. So it is with everyone who is born of the spirit, Nicodemus said to him. How can these things be? Jesus answered him. Are you a teacher of Israel, and yet you do not understand these things? Very truly, I tell you, we speak of what we know and testify to what we have seen, yet you do not receive our testimony. If I have told you about earthly things and you do not believe, how can you believe if I tell you about heavenly things. No one has ascended into heaven except the one who descends from heaven, the son of man. And just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the son of man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but may, be, but may have eternal life. Indeed, God did send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that, he, that the world might be saved through him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. <clears throat> may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O God, our rock and our redeemer. A couple of weeks ago, my brother came to visit me for the first time in almost a year and a half. Now, most of that was pandemic time, so it might seem normal, but actually my brother doesn't visit me a lot. One night after dinner, we were sitting in the living room and he told me that he'd had a realization 
that he wanted to be nicer to his family. He said he had suddenly woken up to the fact that we were all going to die someday um, and that he wanted to have a better relationship with us. And then he proceeded to ask me to explain the Trinity, a sort of abrupt change of subject, but okay. He said that he'd been trying to think it through from a logical point of view. What were the axioms? We believe in one God, but we also believe that Jesus, the Father, and the Holy Spirit are each fully God. He asked, is God a set in which there are three objects? I said, I don't think so. I think that's either polytheism, three gods, or partialism, three parts of God, a heresy where the members of the Trinity are understood to be only a part or aspect of God. He asked, well, is one of the axioms of the Trinity that it is logically inconsistent? Yeah, I suppose, I told him. You see, the doctrine of the Trinity is confusing and indeed contradictory. But it is first and foremost the early church's attempt to make sense of their experience of God and their understanding of scripture. My professor for systematic theology in seminary, Dr. Willie Jennings, said that the Trinity was the early church's attempt to reconcile their experience of Jesus and of the Holy Spirit with the great Shema of the Israelites. The great Shema is something that you may have heard before. It goes like this. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. This is the prayer of the Israelites, the first people of God. And it is the prayer of the Jewish people today. It was indeed the prayer of Jesus. The oneness of God was the central tenet of the Jewish faith as expressed in Deuteronomy verse, chap, chapter 6, verse 4. And yet the Gentile followers of Jesus came to know God not through the Torah, but through Jesus and through the Spirit. And they knew Jesus and the Spirit were God. How were they to make sense of this relationship between these three persons? and yet honor the unity expressed in the great Shema. The voice of our confusion is prefigured in the confusion that Nicodemus expresses when he, asks, when he is asked to do the seemingly impossible. He asks, how can anyone be born again after having grown old? Can one enter a second time into the mother's womb and be born? Just as we do not fully understand what it means to be born of water and spirit, we do not know how it is that God is three and one. But we know that it is true. We know it because of our participation in the divine life of the Trinity. We know it because of the intimate space opened up for us through the relationship between the Father, the so Jesus, and the Holy Spirit. Jesus makes the Father's love known to us, and in doing so, makes God known. This relationship shows us that interdependence is at the heart of God. It shows, up, shows us that relationship is at the heart of God. So when my brother talked in one moment about renewing his relationship with his family, and the next asked about the Trinity, he was actually talking about two things that are deeply related. We are kept from relationship with one another for many reasons. But one of them is our fear of vulnerability and of intimacy. Rather than reaching out to one another, we cover our pain and try to show self-sufficiency, a big value in our culture. When we have a hard day, we show up irritable rather than sad, a kind of armor. When we are lonely, we keep that soft underbelly covered, fending off the risk of further disconnection. When we, when we are struggling and unsure, we say, I'm doing fine, and cut the conversation short because we don't want to talk about how we're falling apart. 
When we are sick and someone offers to help, we say, oh, don't worry about it. I have enough food at home. Or maybe silently plan our grocery delivery from online. I know I do this quite a lot, um, but I'm trying to be different. Recently, when I was having a hard day, I told my mother, well, I am sad, but at least I'm not being mean to anyone else. It feels like a small win when we can transform our pain rather than transmit it. This mysterious story that we heard from Isaiah also shows a model of pain being transformed. In the vision, Isaiah sees God mystically enthroned, The seraphim flank God on either side, their wings a multi-six-wing mystery, and their song mesmerizing. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. You might imagine that someone sitting in front of the king might try to impress the king. They might try to show how important they are, what they have to offer. But Isaiah takes a different path. Rather than trying to impress this royal figure on the throne, Isaiah shows his vulnerability. He shows his pain. Woe is me, I am lost, he cries. And by sharing his pain, it is transformed. His wound is cauterized by the hot coal, and Isaiah is called into a new role. When the Lord asks, who will go for us? Note the plural us somehow a mysterious holy they, Isaiah responds, send me. This holy they, this trinity, creates a space of intimacy where our pain is transformed and where we are changed and sent into the world for mission. If only we are willing to enter the holy space, if only we are willing to share our vulnerability, if we allow our pain to be seen, Tomorrow is Memorial Day, a day with multiple origin stories, rooted in remembering those who died in the Civil War. The contested narratives of its founding, though, show how the wounds of slavery are still present with us today. In a little while, we'll hear Dan Barbiero read the Gettysburg Address, a speech which invites us to reflect on the loss and pain of war and the struggle to remain in relationship. The intimate relationship in the Trinity offers us one possibility of how we might move forward. It suggests that God invites us into a place of vulnerability where our pain can be transformed. It suggests that in the space between the Father, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit, there is a place where through vulnerability, we find the power to say, here I am, send me. Amen.
and sure and certain hope of the resurrection to eternal life, let us affirm our faith and say, I believe, I believe in God, God the Father, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Show us your mercy, O Lord. And grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Let your people sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world. For only in you can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care. And guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon earth. And saving health among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God. And sustain us with your Holy Spirit. Almighty and everlasting God, you have given to us your servants grace by the confession of a true faith to acknowledge the glory of the eternal Trinity and in the power of your divine majesty to worship the unity. Keep us steadfast in this faith and worship and bring us to the and bring us at last to see you in your one and eternal glory. O Father, who with the Son and the Holy Spirit live and reign one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. O Judge of the nations, we remember before you with grateful hearts the men and women of our country who in the day of decision ventured much for the liberties we now enjoy. Grant that we may not rest until all the people of this land share the benefits of true freedom and gladly accept its disciplines. This we ask in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Almighty and most merciful God, we remember before you with we remember before you all poor and neglected persons whom it would be easy for us to forget, the homeless and the destitute, the old and the sick and all who have none to care for them. Help us to heal those who are broken in body or spirit and to turn their sorrow into joy. Grant this, Father, for the love of your Son, who for our sake became poor, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. I ask your prayers for all those who are sick and all those commended to our prayers. God of compassion, be close to those who are ill, afraid, or in isolation particularly those serving our nation overseas, our partner, school and church, St. Matthias in Daylant, Haiti, those who are adversely affected by the coronavirus and its response, and for those who are ill, Shirley Baker, Eileen Bellini, Chloe Clancy, Allie Nick and Charles Culver, Elisa Dean, Luke Demarest, Nancy Fowler, Angelina Rose Freda, Barbara Gallagher, Bob Gonzale, Vanessa Gulo, George Harstead, Charles Hers, Evelyn Hiller, Edith Hoffman, Richard Shaw, Ruth Knudsen, Marie Lee, Bettina Levy, Andrew Lynch, Virginia Martinez, Una McHugh, Linda Miranda, Alan Moore, Peter Morris, Alex Patterson, Peter Pavelko, Joan Penrose Borum, Luna Belperone, Robert Rimos, Jack Santaniello, Catherine Simon, Joan Small, Helen Colgate-Smith, 
Carol Walker, Terry, and for any others we name now aloud or in our hearts. In their loneliness be their consolation, in their anxiety be their hope, in their darkness be their light. Through him who suffered alone on the cross but reigns with you in glory, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. I ask your prayers for all those who have died, especially Barbara Kelly, and all those who have died while serving our nation and any others we name now aloud or in our hearts. May the souls of all the departed through the mercy of God rest in peace and rise in glory. Amen. Amen. I ask your prayers of thanksgiving for all the blessings of our lives, especially for the human ingenuity and God-given talent that has brought us vaccines for COVID and other thanksgivings we name now aloud or in our hearts. We give you thanks, most gracious God, God. For the beauty of earth and sky and sea, for the richness of mountains, plains, and rivers, for the songs of birds and the loveliness of flowers, we praise you for these good gifts and pray that we may safeguard them for our posterity. Grant that we may continue to grow in our grateful enjoyment of your abundant creation to the honor and glory of your name, now and forever. Amen. O oh God, you make us glad with the weekly remembrance of the glorious resurrection of your Son, our Lord. Give us this day such blessing through our worship of you that the week to come may be spent in your favor. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. All right. So delightful to see you all here today. Um, I am going to switch to gallery view for the announcements. Um, it's so nice to have you joining with us on this rainy morning. Um, we have just a few announcements. Um, let me just pull them up. I think that the first thing that you want to be aware of um, is, of course, our change of format for the 10 a.m. service. Um, the registration for 10 a.m. should be live now. Um, so if you want to join us in person, we have a limited number of people that will be able to join. I believe it's 50. Um, and um, if you want to join at 10 a.m., you must register. You will still be able to join us through Zoom on face or Facebook, however, but it will look different. So just be aware that um, you will still be able to access us through the normal way, um, but uh, it will just look a little bit different. And we're all really excited for that. We're excited to be um, moving back more towards normal, although, of course, a limited worship at 50 people is not normal. Um, but, you know, we, we uh, give thanks for these opportunities. I see that Gideon has joined us here now, too. Um, Morning, Mary Beth. Did I do all right? You're doing great. You're doing great. Hi, Richard. You're doing great, too. I love that uh, mic on you. I think it's a good look for you always. Yeah. Um, we have just a couple of other announcements. We are um, still, I think I just talked to George Lindsay this morning. If you're interested in becoming a lay reader, they've put together a schedule, but still interested in folks that want to be part of that. Um, we are also still actively recruiting for our virtual AV ministry. Um, and this is one of these situations where many hands will make light work. And if you um, would be willing to help uh, learn how to run the cameras here at the church and would be willing to do it, say, once every two months, if we have um, a, a good rotation, it won't be a burden for anyone. So, and that's going to be absolutely key so that the people at home are still able to join us. Um, so please reach out to Gideon about that. Um, we also have um, upcoming our, um, what am I trying to say? Oh, our recognition of those who are graduating from high school or college. If someone that you love is graduating from high school or college this year, um, go to the at St. John's, tell us about them, um, and we will pray for them in, the, in our service uh, on the 13th, and we'll show pictures of young people that are connected to this congregation. So I hope that you will go and fill that out. Um, also um, ongoing are our garden work days. Um, Tuesdays at 5 p.m. and Saturdays at 10 a.m., although we got rained out yesterday. Um, 
I'm trying to think, am I missing anything? I know June has an announcement, um, I, but I think that that is it for kind of normal announcements. Gideon has one. I just want to say, I don't know if June's going to say this. I'm sure he is actually, but I just want to thank the choir for that amazing cantique de genre scene. Oh yes, of course. And for the amazing work they've done all year long in supporting us in worship. It's been an incredibly difficult year um, of rehearsing um, at a distance and recording individually. Um, and I know that that's less than ideal conditions for a, a choir that values ensemble. Um, but, you know, what you've done for us this year in keeping us connected and keeping the music uh, as such a central part of our worship and such a beautiful part of our worship, I don't think um, I'm alone in, in thanking you all for that incredible, incredible hard work. It's been amazing, an amazing gift to all of us. So thank you for that. Um, and I hope that we'll get a chance to recognize you fully uh, when we're all back together. But in case... Uh, in case some of the choir members take off after this uh, season ends today, I just want to say thank you so, so much from all of us. It has meant the world. So thank you. And, uh, and with that, Mary Beth, I'll pass it back to you or June, whoever, whoever is right. June, do you have announcements? Yes, yes I do. Um, I wanted to, uh, yes, add on to that thanks. And uh, for that next week, the service at 10 a.m., the June 6th service, the whole entire music ministry will be recognized during the service. So I, uh, I urge you to come to the 10 a.m. service in person or via the stream and just uh, join in our congregation. Con congratulations for the music ministry. I um, also wanted to thank the members of the congregation who joined in for the Holy, 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 the Lord God Almighty virtual congregational hymn that we'll be singing right right now actually <laughs> yes. so thank you thank you and that was the last congregational virtual congregation ham that we are we are doing so uh, i'm grateful for your all your contributions throughout the year thank you all right good i'd just like to say uh, thank you for helping to put all those uh, recordings uh, together uh for anybody who uh, doesn't know the technology of this, and I don't understand it that well. It's a tremendous uh, amount of work, uh, often done under terrific deadline pressure. So uh, thank you once again. Yes, thank you. And we'll have more time for a conversation momentarily in coffee hour. Um, so thank you all so much. Um, and the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. I am so sorry, but for some reason the host has changed and I cannot share the screen. Right, right now. Right now. <laughs> sorry. There we go. <laughs>
I just want to say that uh, although we recite the Gettysburg Address on Memorial Day weekend, that Memorial Day is a remembrance of not just the Civil War fighters who died, but all those who have given their lives for our country and the many wars that followed. President Lincoln gave the following address on November 19th, 1863 at the National Cemetery in Gettysburg, Pennsylvania. Four score and seven years ago, our fathers brought forth on this continent a new nation conceived in liberty and dedicated to the proposition that all men are created equal. Now we are engaged in a great civil war, testing whether that nation or any other nation so conceived and so dedicated can long endure. We are met on a great battlefield of that war. We have come to dedicate a portion of that field as a final resting place for those who here gave their lives that that nation might live. It is altogether fitting and proper that we should do this. But in a larger sense, we cannot dedicate, we cannot consecrate, we cannot hallow this ground. The brave men living and dead who struggled here have consecrated it far above our poor power to add or detract. The world will little note nor long remember what we say here, but it can never forget what they did here. It is for us the living rather to be dedicated here to the unfinished work which they who fought here have thus so far so nobly advanced. It is rather for us to be here dedicated to the great task remaining before us that from these honored dead, we take increased devotion to that cause for which they gave the last full measure of devotion. That we here highly resolve that these dead shall not have died in vain, that this nation under God shall have a new birth of freedom and that government of the people, by the people and for the people shall not perish from the earth.
Yay! Yay! Wow. Amazing, Carol, thank you. Fabulous. Thank you, thank you. Oh my goodness. How is everyone?